Hey, g'day guys, it's Galvin, Coaching Company in New Zealand. I'm doing a little Link Monsoon X. It's off to Canada. And I'm going to put OBD2, I'm going to put a plug in for OBD2 on this vehicle. And we'll show you what I've done and how I've done it. The basic loom sitting on the bench. This one is a, funny enough, it's a 1UZ. Uh, it is Link Monsoon, it's Tefso, it's Raychem, it's new plugs, it's using the standard ignition, so just a little two channel igniter on there. It's got lots of cool stuff. It's got uh, the ability to change from just an oil switch to an oil pressure sensor, like that one. Lots of cool outputs. There's a video on the loom. So check that out as well if you're interested in something like this or what you can do. And even though I'm making these looms, I'm also sharing information on, on how I make them and what I do and these tricks and tips of making your own looms and making your looms better. So when I wire these, I use the, the two can outputs, so can high and can low. And I bring them out to a normal four pin DTM and I pin it the same as the can lambda so that has a, a, a power wire and that wire is on its own on its own circuit all the way from the relay box all the way from there there's an earth which is on the back of the block that's on pin two and I put can low on pin 3 and can high on pin 4. On the wiring diagrams on the pin out, can high and can low are listed. Um, and these ones are on the main header plug in this situation. Some of them um, are also in the little plug on the side of some models. I have added a, a 120 ohm resistor. Between 100 and 120 will work fine. I think the link actually suggests 100. CAN communication standard is a 120. So that's tucked in there. If we have a closer look, I'll pop the shrink wrap off. I deliberately didn't shrink it. So I've got my CAN low, the green wire, green for grass, the 120 ohm resistor, and then the yellow wire, yellow for sun, which is up high. And they will get shrink wrapped and just tucked close to that CAN plug. I've then used my OBD2 plug. Pin 16 is the power wire. And in this case, I didn't wire it to permanent uh, battery, like a lot of them. And this way I can use a little dongle, which we'll see soon, to communicate with the ECU. We've got two earth wires in pin four and five, and they are fine just going straight to the, to the uh, back of the block, earth on the block and be joined can high in pin 6 and can low in pin 14 directly below it. So that's the OBD2 plug and it will plug directly into the loom like so and we'll get some communications. I'm going to fire this loom onto that engine and then we'll do some setup and we'll make that can work and we'll confirm it probably to my phone or to my scan tool, that it's working like it should. Oh, look at that. Sun is shining in. Wiring loom is fitted to the engine. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. I'll see it in the shadow and it actually gives better. There we go. ECU's fitted, powered up. It makes the vroom vroom noises when I touch the wires. That one there. Brum, brum, brum. Right, we need to set up that OBD2 into the laptop 
<coughs> so I'm in the software, I'm connected to the ECU, then the help file is the wiring information for the OBD2. We go and um, I don't actually know where to find it. OBD2. Wiring. What are you on? OBD2. Can OBD2. It doesn't help me. Let's do can wiring. That's better. ECU to OBD2 port wiring. There we go. What was I saying? We had uh, a power 12 volt to pin 16. We had earth to 4 and 5. Can high to number 6 and can low to number 14. I just had to check that because I was working off my memory before. All right, let's do some setup. Get out of there. We're going to go up here, ECU controls, and we're going to do CAN setup. CAN 1, I'm going to turn it to ISO 15765 on CAN 1. Don't need to put anything there at all. But I do need to change the bit rate on those dongles, happen to be a 1 kilobit per second. This is set up for some canned lambdas, actually in the tune previous. I'm just gonna turn those off. Um, so you can run the canned lambda as well. Um, you just need to change the communication speed on the canned lambdas to suit. Push okay. And of course we store that. Store to ECU, perfect. All right, let's see if we can get in on the phone. Plug the dongle in. And it's doing its thing in here. There's flashing of lights. We've got real-time information. So it's telling me that the coolant is at 40 degrees. We look on this computer screen, it's at 40 degrees. Can we see there? 40 degrees, look at that, yep. Shall I open the TPS and see what it does? Uh, throttle, opening throttle. Perfect. So there we have communication from the Link ECU to my phone using the Talk app. Using though one of the little cheap dongles, you can get them in a lot of places. And those ones that I use just seem to work just fine. I'm gonna throw that in on this, on this job so the customer can use a smartphone and communicate with his ECU. So I hope that's been helpful. Talk to you again soon. Catch you later.